Hello friends, welcome to a new chapter today. In this chapter, we are going to learn some important points about gallbladder. So, in the gallbladder, the first important thing which is important in gallbladder is about the callet triangle and <coughs> cholecystohepatic triangle. We have two triangles which are very important in gallbladder, which are callet triangle. Second, we have cholecystohepatic triangle. So, if you see in callet triangle, so the boundaries of callet triangle are superiorly where there is lower border of liver. Medially, we have this. Um, com uh, we have the hepatic duct and bile duct, common hepatic duct and uh, left hepatic duct is present medially. If you see laterally, you will see the cystic duct with the gallbladder is seen laterally. That is cysto cholecystohepatic triangle. Then we also have callet tri triangle. So in callet triangle, we have superiorly it is cystic artery. Medially, it is bounded by common hepatic duct. Laterally, you will see this cystic duct. Okay, so this uh, boundaries of the triangle are very important. Then, then let us now learn some important points about gallbladder. So I have told you the boundaries of both these triangles. Okay, now what are the investigations? So first, in the investigations, we have different investigations. Uh, so first, we will see oral cholecystogram or Graham Coley's test. This oral cholecystogram or uh, Graham's Coley's test is now is used non is used for non opaque stones. It has been replaced. It is replaced by USG nowadays. We do not use this oral cholecystogram. We generally use USG because with the help of USG we can find the stones easily. Okay. Then we have something called as IV cholangiogram. This IV cholangiogram will tell us about the biliary tree properly. Okay, so this is also called as biligram because it tells us about the biliary tree. And for this, we use the contrast which is megglumine ioglycomate is used. Megglumine ioglycomate is used. Then we have per operative cholangiogram. This per operative cholangiogram are mainly done to find the to exclude the bile stone, st bile, duct, bile duct stones. We do this per operative cholangiogram to exclude the bile duct stones. So this is mainly done in held down tilt position that to around 20 degrees you will put the, the head down tilt and you will do the surgery. You will do the sorry you will do the investigation that is per operative cholangiogram. Okay next next you have about USG. If you see this USG is the first investigation it is the first investigation for gallbladder and bile duct. The first investigation for gallbladder and bile duct is USG is done as the first investigation. Then we have HEDA scan. Okay, this HEDA scan is mainly technetium labeled <coughs> immunodiacetic acid. HEDA scan includes mainly, it mainly includes technetium labeled, technetium 99M labeled immunodiacetic acid. So this HEDA scan here we do this, this is the gold standard, HEDA scan is gold standard to diagnose acute cholecystitis. So HEDA scan is done to diagnose cholecystitis, it is technetium 99M labeled imidoacetic acid. Okay, then, then we have CT scan, CT scan can be done for carcinoma of gallbladder and bile duct, we have MRCP, actually this MRCP is the most accurate and non-invasive test is MRCP. So in MRCP, this is nothing but MRI. MRCP is nothing but it is an MRI which is focusing on bile, biliary tract and pancreatic duct. In this MRCP, we it is nothing but an MRI which is mainly focusing on biliary tract and bile pancreatic duct. Okay. Then the next investigation is we have ERCP. This ERCP is actually the gold standard to diagnose the CBD stones. We can also use this ERCP for interventional purposes. Okay, this is gold standard for diagnosing CBD stones, and we can also use this ERCP for interventional purposes. Then, if you see the HEDA scan, in the HEDA scan, 90% of gallbladder is visualized in 30 minutes, whereas 100% of gallbladder is visualized in 1 hour in HEDA scan. So, these are the investigations which are done, which can be done for gallbladder. right next 
the next uh, next we will see some congenital sorry so let us now learn some congenital abnormalities of gall bladder and biliary duct and bile duct so the first congenital abnormality is absence of gall bladder okay so we will see the congenital abnormalities first absence of gall bladder where gall bladder is completely absent there is cal something called as phrygian cap this is the phrygian cap here this type of fold which you see in gall bladder is called as phrygian cap and it is seen in 5% of individuals then we have something called as double gall bladder double gall bladder is presence of two gall bladders is double gall bladder then we have something called as floating or mobile or mesenteric gall bladder this floating or mobile or mesenteric gall bladder has long mesentery okay then we have something called as absent cystic duct is present for can be seen that is cystic duct is absent sometimes cystic duct can be long it is long cystic duct sometimes we can have accessory cholecystohepatic duct which is called as accessory cholecystohepatic duct or duct of lashka duct of lashka is accessory cholecystohepatic duct we can have double cystic duct like two cystic ducts can be there we can have moiny hen cat caterpillar hump also this moiny hen caterpillar hump is in this the hepatic artery will be very tortuous okay this tortuosity of hepatic artery can be there see i'll just draw this diagram of hepatic uh, moiny hen's hepatic hump sorry this is the gall bladder and this is the liver okay now the hepatic artery which is there that is very tortuous that may be very tortuous like this it's not fo falling in one normal plane so it is tortuous so because of this tortuosity sometimes the surgeons might mistakenly cut it might mistake it for the bile duct and they might they might cut it so that is the main problem in moiny hen's caterpillar hump because of this hump which it has so they might uh, get confused and they might cut it so this is about the congenital malformations so thank you guys in for watching my lecture in the next class we will learn about extrahepatic biliary atresia thank you